Yeah, so I was kind of interested in science from a really young age. Um, I can't sort of pinpoint exactly when that happened, but I remember um, someone who had a particularly um, strong influence over me when I was quite young was actually my grandfather. Um, he was very interested in um, gardening and I sort of used to wander around with him in his garden looking at all of the insects. I was kind of the first one in my family to go to uni and, and actually be interested in science. So I had a few teachers in primary school that um, really encouraged me to be good at problem solving in terms of like mathematics problems um, and really into reading and spelling and that sort of thing. Um, so I picked biology and chemistry, uh, mainly because physics was a lot less interesting to me. <laughs> I found biology and chemistry quite cool and I really enjoyed the labs and, um, you know, mixing things together or cutting things up in the labs. So I thought biology and chemistry were a good fit. So it's it's difficult to, to describe a typical day for me because there kind of isn't really a typical day. I guess every kind of day is quite different um, depending on, you know, where I'm at in my experiments. I spend a lot of time in the lab, so I spend a lot of time, um, we grow those stem cells ourselves. So I spend a lot of time feeding and growing stem cells um, and helping them divide and helping them keep um, fresh and happy. Um, that takes up a lot of my time, as does being on the microscope. Travel is one of the huge perks of this career. Um, it's very uh, it's very easy to get uh funding to go to different conferences around the world. So I signed up for a conference in France and I went to a little French town called La Rochelle, which was absolutely beautiful. Um, so I flew into Paris and then I caught the train out to La Rochelle to this beautiful kind of seaside town in France. Uh, and I spent about a week there going to this conference um, where there was scientists from all over the world um, particularly one who I was extremely starstruck to meet. Um, I think it's more to do with the problem solving. I really like problem solving and kind of needing to be creative, I think, with, you know, we might have a question and we say, well, how do we actually study that? What, how, you know, our question is, how do the microtubules shape cell identity? Well, how do we even begin to look into that? Um, so that I find really interesting and it's always, you know, it's always a challenge, um, which I think is a good thing because otherwise it would be a little bit boring because, you know, I want something that's challenging and that you, you constantly have to be thinking about how can I do this? How can I, you know, how can I solve this problem? Um, so I think that that's kind of my favorite thing about being a scientist is using my creativity to try to solve problems. But I think it's just as important to make kind of incremental changes to our understanding um, of the world. So, you know, I've always been super fascinated by what makes us human. How do we go from being an embryo to being a person? You know, what makes a cell act in the way that it does? I've always been super fascinated by these really fundamental kinds of questions. Um, I find them almost like a philosophical question in a way, like what makes us human? Um, so I think broadening our understanding of, of those really fundamental things of what makes us human and what, what makes us alive, you know, I think that that would be something that I want to, to leave behind when I, um, you know, I'm at the end of my career. Um, that would be kind of the impact that I would want to make is, is kind of broadening our understanding of of how we are the way that we are. I think if you're interested in science, absolutely go for it. Um, I think, you know, it can be really, it can be really challenging at times. Um, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of studying, but I think if you're interested in it, it's, it's such a rewarding career, um, you know, and it, I often feel like I don't have a real job. Like I was saying earlier, there's so many different aspects to science. You can find something that's your kind of niche favorite thing that you can't stop thinking about. Um, and, you know, you can, you can just make that your own little world and live in that bubble. <laughs>